Hey guys, Apple's future is almost upon us. The iPhone 11 Pro series will be unveiled in just one day. Couldn't be more excited, this waiting period right up until the end. More news, more leaks, and I just wanted to talk to you about the expectations, what's likely to happen, what won't, and some very interesting competition that's just cropped up from Huawei. All right, let's get into it. So first thing I wanted to mention is Mark Gurman phrased it pretty nicely. The tagline for this event by innovation only, Apple's setting themselves up for quite some expectation. They should really be innovating at this event if that's what it's all about. And this innovation tag could really be applied to anything. The new Apple tile they're set to release could be an innovation. The new colors for the iPhone, the new camera could be an innovation. Even the smallest innovation is still an innovation, technically, even if it's been done before, just not by Apple. Regardless, I'm still sure that they'll do well. And a quick recap of my favorite features I'm looking forward to on the iPhone. Number one is probably gonna be the new colors, new finishes, the matte touch, the rainbow look. By the way, Elixar seems to think that the rainbow color will be happening as one of their listings show this new color shift effect. Very similar to Huawei's or the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 series. All these other manufacturers are doing it. Why not Apple? They clearly see a demand for it. so we may be finally getting an effect like that. And as we know, Max Weinbach did claim that the Apple logo would get a subtle rainbow effect. Why not the whole back, even underneath the matte coating? It could be super interesting and probably would be the most sold out color, of course, if they did that. Definitely the improved water resistance and shock resistance that Mark Gurman is saying Apple will be upgrading. Actually, for the first time ever, I accidentally drowned an iPhone, my 10s in the bath the other day. And I thought it was IP68 rated. It really depends on the circumstances, maybe even the heat of the water. So don't always rely on that protecting you. But maybe if I had the 11 Pro, it wouldn't have happened to me. Anyways, mine's all freaking out. The front camera's blurry. That's a first for me, so that's nice. Can't wait to get the 11 Pro to fix that. Of course, the reverse wireless charge, where I'll be able to charge my Apple Watch or the AirPods 2 on the back is probably one of my most anticipated. And of course, the triple camera. Who doesn't want better pictures, especially low light photography? Also on Elixir's website, the iPhone 11, the 6.1 inch, is shown in a new green color. Could this one be the green color that we've been hearing so much about? It looks really good, very sharp, very vibrant, and a lot more reflective than I thought it would be. Even the borders are chrome. So could Apple be changing the 10R look from a matte border to a shiny border like the iPhone XS series? In the Fifth Avenue Apple Store, which is going through a renovation, Innovation has been shown with a chromatic rainbow look vinyl on it. Could this be possibly a precursor that Apple is indeed doing that color shift on the iPhone 11 Pro series? I'd like to think that those coincidences are connected here. And it went from it might be happening to absolutely confirmed. The middle mounted Apple logo is actually happening. Mark Gurman has confirmed it in his latest recap report of the iPhone 11. So anticipate a very unique look on your new iPhone. Of course, the new camera, but also the removal of the iPhone text and the Apple logo exactly mounted in the middle. I personally love it. It's clean, it's fresh. No other company has done something similar to it. And that's what Apple's all about, being distinct. And the display components for the iPhone 11, the 10R successor has leaked, showing us a couple differences. So in the actual shielding, there's a change there. Max Weinberg did say that Apple would be improving the corners of the new iPhone 11 LCD display. The anti-aliasing could be getting better in the corners, one place where apparently it suffers right now. And there's a changed earpiece up top. So Apple is changing that, improving the speaker quality on this year's iPhone lineup. It's no surprise. That's one of the iPhone's strong suits right now is just how good the speakers are. So of course, why not upgrade already what they're good at? And I wanted to throw in that we may have been wrong about the mute switch which the new designs have been showing us that it goes up and down. And I can't say why exactly, it's some shady leak stuff, but that design may be wrong. And it may still be like the existing side to side version, just a little smaller and lower. Definitely see that on Tuesday. Now, will we see AirPods 3 or AirPods Pro, this upgraded version with active noise cancellation at this event? Quartz seems to think so, that Apple will be unveiling them at the event, but not releasing them until early 2020. As we know, the original AirPods got unveiled and then released way, way later, so Apple may be following a similar strategy here. They still have to sell the AirPods 2 that they unveiled. They have a bunch of those, although it's very likely that they'll be sold alongside the existing AirPods 2 and AirPods 1, not as an entire replacement to them. And regarding AirPods 3, Huawei's new FreeBuds 3 are very impressive. So these are exactly what AirPods 3 should be, according to all of the rumors, except 
while we beat them to the punch. They're not an in-ear design, but they do feature active noise cancellation that can help you diminish outside noise by 15 decibels using a new wind screen guard. They look really good, actually suspiciously close to AirPods, even the case, the back plating, which is of course a different shape. They had to change something. Otherwise it looks like a carbon copy of what AirPods 3 might be. Most impressive thing is how they did it without an in-ear solution. So it's not completely sealed off, but they were able to use some crafty technology to get that wind cancellation and active noise cancellation to work. And very interesting is that they copied Apple's H1 or W1 chip in the form of Kirin A1. So it connects in the same manner as Apple's H1 chip. It uses Bluetooth 5.1, which uses the latest standards for energy efficiency, making them likely even more energy efficient than Apple's AirPods right now. And that's very interesting to me is how will Apple respond to this? Will the new AirPods 3 have a new chip, H2 perhaps? to combat this, maybe using the new protocol, Bluetooth 5.1 as well. And of course, Huawei had to go and beat Apple to the punch with their new Kirin 990 CPU, which is using the same seven nanometer plus architecture, using the extreme ultraviolet lithography process, just making it even more condensed. And it's absolutely a very hard process to achieve but they did it before Apple. Theirs is using 10.3 billion transistors, which is roughly what we anticipate the Apple A13 to have, maybe a little more. Apple's current A12 has 6.7 billion. So that's quite dense. And I'm curious how the new Mate 30 with that chip will compare to Apple's. And some more sneakery from Huawei. By the way, I know this isn't a Huawei video, but them being one of Apple's biggest threats, it interests me what they do. They actually managed to skirt a sales ban on their P30 series by re-releasing it with a new color, which which by the way, looks cool. We rendered it on the new iPhone 11 and they were able to re-release it with Android 10 as a result. The Mate 30, which is going to be the 11 Pro's, one of their biggest competitor, will actually not be getting the Play Store. So this is kind of a smart move on Huawei's end. Very brilliant. Going back to the Apple stuff, Ming-Chi Ko is back with a couple new reports, starting with Apple's Tile competitor, which they'll be announcing in just a day here. He's saying it'll be far more advanced and more accurate than Tile's current offerings because it'll be using a new technology, ultra wideband technology, which is far greater, 100 times more accurate than Bluetooth LE and Wi-Fi. And so it'll be able to track things in an in indoor environment much more reliably and accurately. And that's something you certainly want, especially integrated with the Apple ecosystem. And Tile's about to have a really bad week and so on, as Apple's essentially going to be putting them out of business for new customers. Existing people will probably keep their hardware, but why would you wanna buy that when Apple's is so much better? And one of the iPhone 11 Pro's biggest feature is going to be indoor navigation using this ultra wideband technology. Apple's implementing it into the iPhone, so you'll be able to navigate within malls, airports, just large indoor areas far more accurately. They'll start tracking all of that. And thanks to this new technology, it'll be extremely accurate. And of course we heard about Apple's new balloon or it system, I'm calling it, with the red balloon that'll come down and you'll be able to use AR on the iPhone 11 to track your lost items with the Apple tag or whatever they'll call it. So you'll be able to see that red balloon with a string going down to it. I think it's brilliant and can't wait to see it in action. And Ming Chi Ko followed up on the 2020 iPhones by giving us a few insights on that. First off, and most interestingly, is he saying it will be going through a new design refresh. As we know, Apple switched to the three year cycle refresh where the same design sticks around for three years now, and it's gonna be the fourth year. So of course we're getting a refresh. And this is the first confirmation we've heard of an actual design refresh besides the screens growing in size. Of course, it'll have 5G technology built in and the third feature he's saying will be the camera upgrades so this year apple is establishing a triple lens system what we know about 2020 iphones is they'll be getting a 3d sensor on the rear and for that you need a time of flight camera sensor so as vanya guest can predict it earlier apple might be adding a fourth camera sensor to the back and he kind of balanced it out with this new lens design looks more even i guess it would work uh, i'm sure that apple will figure something out that looks decent or unless you've lost faith in them with the 2019 iPhones. I personally don't get the complaining. I actually, I think the design is okay. There's a reason why Apple's doing it and I'm sure they'll tell us why here in a moment. So the 2020 iPhones are going to be huge. You know, it's all the changes you could ever want, but don't discount this year's iPhones. I think they'll still be a very enticing upgrade, especially with people with an iPhone 10 or even one year older than that. There are a lot of people that are looking forward to this. Better camera quality is huge. That alone is one of the biggest reasons for people to upgrade. And of course, the better battery life inside. The new layout inside is pretty revolutionary from like an engineering standpoint. Even so, I think it'll be a very enticing upgrade. And both Quartz and Bloomberg are anticipating an iPad Pro refresh. 
very likely to be announced at this event. Although not a very large one, it will still be a significant upgrade. It'll be faster with likely a new processor, better battery life. I'd like to see some new colors too. That would be very cool, at least a rose gold option but the iPad Pros will likely be refreshed at the event. And Twitter leaker Longhorn is saying that the Apple A13X is not real, it doesn't exist, it will not be getting refreshed. And that's not very surprising to hear as Apple has not always refreshed their X processors on the iPads. And what he found was a refresh of the Apple A12X. So Apple could just be rebadging it, adding a little bit more transistors, more power, more capability with an AR section on the processor. We'll definitely find out just a couple days here. And The Verge has published an article as to why we may not be seeing an Apple Watch Series 5 refresh, at least not a true one. Even if Apple will call it the Series 5, it'll still have the Series 4 processor, just different finishes, titanium, ceramic, possibly better battery life, sleep tracking. It mostly comes down to the fact that Apple doesn't have any real competition yet. The Apple Watch Series 4 is already such an evolutionary, a revolutionary upgrade over the Series 3 that they're not rushing to fix what ain't broken just yet. And I wanted to say a special thank you to everyone that made this year in Apple Leaks fun and possible even. That's Mark German, Max Weinbach, Ming Chi Ko, On Leaks, and Vanya Geskin. I thought that that was very cool, that shout out. So I wanted to say all of these leaks have been making our case possible, which will be launching here very, very soon. And we won't make the iPhone 11 Pro launch for everyone asking, it'll be a couple months after. We wanna ensure that we have a perfect fit because right now we do have the leaked CADs, but we want it to fit like a glove. We'll be keeping you updated on that and just wanted to say thank you. Yeah, this year has been crazy. It's all made our new company with the Bro King possible and we hope to deliver the best cases as a result. By the way, the 11 Pro cases are available at many retailers already showing up at like Walmart, Best Buys even, and you can order those, have one ready for launch on the 20th, and then we're coming out with hours a couple months later. So keep an eye out for that. I promise we'll make it worth your money. It's not going to be revolutionary, but they'll make you want it. They always do. I mean, I'm sure the new color alone will be enticing.